the more things change, the more they remain the same. We are witnessing what this country has been through before. The times of late night arrests and detentions of people without any formal charges. This is what happens to be coming back to our country. Those are not my words. Raila Amoyodinga, the former Prime Minister, spoke those words shortly after visiting the current home of the former Interior Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Fred Matiani. This is Fred Chando Channel, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly support the channel. Above all, subscribe, click the notification bell, and like our videos. The late night news that over 200 police officers of the elite squad surrounded the home of the former Prime Minister Fred Okeno Matiani sends chills down the spine of many Kenyans. One wonders why a senior citizen should be arrested at night. And uh, I think we are going back to the dark ages, ladies and gentlemen. I understand because I was in social media shortly after the breaking news and we've got divided opinions. And if this is what we look like as a country, we are headed nowhere. Those who are supporting William Samuel Ruto are saying that uh, this is the best thing to do. And number one reason why there is an elite squad around his current home is because of revenge. Because many Kenyans are saying, and I've seen pictures flying left, right and center of uh, the days when our Deputy President Gedi Shagwa claimed that uh, the DCI officers visited his home at night. And I've seen pictures of Fred Okeng Matiani welcoming the former president Uhuru Kenyatta and the deputy president standing some distance. I have made it very clear on this channel and I want to reiterate. Ladies and gentlemen, a wrong is a wrong. Regardless of the regime that is practicing it. If the deputy president was arrested at night without being given a chance to prove himself or to without being told why he was being apprehended, it was wrong. And very many people, I believe, condemned it then. It was wrong then and so it is wrong now for any senior citizen, for any ordinary manainchi to be arrested late into the night without even being told why he's being taken to, without being told why he's being arrested, I feel we are condescending very low as a country. You know, if there is one person I believed was going to change this country, despite all the hula balu going around, was William Samuel Ruto. And I will tell you honestly, that when William Samuel Ruto presented himself as a man of God, I thought Christianity should change people. And I thought that what he was going to do when he gets to power was to unite the country. I'm shocked that he is perpetuating the very things he condemned. I am not a lawyer and I'm not very much privy to the Bill of Rights. I don't know exactly what it contains. But one thing I can assure you is that there is someone who has committed any illegality, we had the whole day from morning to evening they should have sent the officers during the day to come and summon Mr. Matiani. He can present himself to the nearest police station. Let me tell you. To send over 200 police officers to arrest one man in the dead of the night is meant to intimidate. I believe that Fred has got a family. I can imagine if his son or his daughter or the wife is there with them in the home and then all of a sudden over 200 police officers. Just the other day, they scaled down their security. What kind of intimidation is this and where are we headed? 
we have decided God gave us a golden opportunity to heal this country, but we have decided to choose the path of vengeance and revenge. It is taking us nowhere, I can assure you. This is a warning maybe to the Azimio team. Because of late they have decided, they, 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 they said that they don't recognize the legitimacy of President William Ruto. And so William Ruto is like telling them, I am the man. And how is he doing it? By intimidation. Sending many police officers at night. Just for someone who may be supporting Azimio to start trembling and say, no, I can't continue with this. But I'm afraid that uh, sometimes the reverse can happen. This can even harden the hearts of many who, was, who had started healing. And it might even make them go to the streets. It can make others say, okay, if this is the way to go, then we need to fight for our rights. Because you never know from Okengo Machani who is next. Just the other day, I remember, Gwini Mudai tweeted and saying that when they went for Mamangina, I did not speak because I am not a Kenyatta. And when they went for Equity Bank, I did not speak because I don't uh, belong to the Equity Bank. When they came for the Kikuyus, I did not speak because I was not a Kikuyu. Now, they are coming for me. And there was no one to speak on my behalf because all of them were dead. What we are witnessing is something that we need to stand against. Today, you can be very happy because it is happening to Fred Martin. But tomorrow it will be you or your relative, your son or your daughter or your brother, your father or your mother. And I think that uh, as a nation, we can do better than this. I believe we can do better than this. Um, if Fred has got some charges, because I understand that there are over 200 lawyers who are ready to keep vigil, Raila Odinga had gone there, he received this news, and he went there very fast. And we have got a host of very many other leaders who are there, and they are going to keep vigil just to ensure that nothing bad will happen to Fredo King Machen. The lead lawyer, Dunstan Omari, said that the life of King Machen, Fred, is in danger. And you can see where we are headed. We are just six months after the August polls, and this has started. Are we testing waters? Is President Ruto testing just to see how united the Azimio is? Just how they can stand with, with one of their own? Is it a way of just testing the level of patience, testing the patience of, the, of Kenyans and that of the opposition? Because when this is happening, sometimes in governments use certain methods to test waters just to see what exactly can happen. One person who has remained my hero in all this, Israel Amundo Dinga. The last time I watched him keeping vigil at night was at Jimmy Wanjigi's place when the same thing was happening. William Ruto was then the deputy president and Uru Kenyatta was the president. And they did this to Jimmy Wanjigi. Time flies so fast. Today it is William Ruto who is at the helm and they're doing it to someone else. I think that an injustice to one person, ladies and gentlemen, is an injustice to all. I would not wish that this happens to the opposition. I would not wish that it happens to anyone in the government. Just the same way I did not wish that it happened to maybe William Ruto then. We understand that William Ruto, Rigedi Shagwa, and men who were supporting him might have tested some bit of uh, unfairness from the, uh, from the previous government. But I thought that they had the golden opportunity to show the previous regime how things are done. Magnanimity, working with your enemies, following the rule of law, so that we see, we juxtapose the two governments and we, we, we see the level of sanity between them. Now, if this government is doing the same thing that the former government was doing, there is no difference, ladies and gentlemen. I dare say so. And so, I wish that we make a U-turn and do things the right way. We must, as William Ruto himself, the president of Kenya, said, we must follow the rule of law. We can never live 
like we're in a jungle. We are guided by the law. Let the law follow its course to the latter. That is my take, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you think.